I just want to pray over a, a couple of things as well first before we get started. Father God, we want to thank you and give you praise in all things, Lord. You are the mighty and faithful one, our refuge and fortress, Lord. Father, I do pray that you help me get out of the way and that I would yield to your Holy Spirit. And I pray that, uh, that you will open my mouth to faithfully share with your people the things you're showing and speaking in this hour. And I also pray, Lord, for open ears, that the Holy Spirit minister to each individual how this message may apply to them. In Jesus' name, amen. And, <clears throat> excuse me, John, as I've prayed about what, God, you know, wanted me to share tonight. I kept asking, Lord, what is it if uh, that you are saying to your people, what do you want us to know and understand in this hour? So he had me review what I've, you know, personally been shown within the last um, oh, few months. And I have to say pretty much everything the Lord's been emphasizing to me has to do with entering into intimacy with him. And so I'll be speaking about God's call to enter into that secret place, you know, to, to seek a level of intimacy with him that's absolutely key to everything. And then in the same vein, I want to share what was revealed about the plan of the devil to prevent not only intimacy with God, but everyone else in your life. Let me first touch on the uh, urgency of the time we're in right now. Uh, many of us are at a point where it seems we're barely holding on. Um, that's the impression I'm getting as I correspond and pray with, with God's people, and I'm sure John and, and others can, can say the same thing. But, and the Lord has a lot to say about it. As, as It's not his will for us to barely be holding on. And this message is especially for those going through those extremely difficult times right now. And uh, I know I am. I, <laughs> I really can't think of anyone that's just, you know, skating along, you know, in ease right now. But God wants to encourage us and, and give specific instructions on how to maneuver the waters, um, if you want to call it that. So let me get started. And I just want to say here, as I go through some recent dreams and visions the Lord's given, you'll notice that sense of urgency. The Lord spoke the following to me in the early morning hours of uh, July 17th this year. And he said, heads up, heads up. Heads up. And as I've warned you, all hell is coming against you. It is even now at the door. The enemy has surrounded the camps of my people. But fear not. They that are with you are more than be with them. Nothing can stop you until my purposes are fulfilled. Now that's the end of what was said, but by the time... Uh, heads up was spoken the second time I'd grab, you know, something quickly to write down what I was hearing. And I was then reminded of the previous week. Um, and, and at this particular time, I'd continually been awakened while praying for the lost. And, and I was praying for the lost in and outside the church. And I knew this was of the Spirit of God because the praying was what kept waking me up, the praying itself. And each time I'd hear myself groaning in the Spirit, as well as prayers of repentance and, and intercession coming out of my mouth. Then I'd fall asleep again. And that was repeated all through the night. And uh, thanks what the Lord imparted to me was a sense of urgency because the world as we know it, is about to change. And, and as, you know, I'm speaking to the choir here, but the signs Jesus gave to signal his return are unfolding all around us. And as it's written, the Lord does nothing unless he reveals a secret to the servants, the prophets, his servants, the prophets. And that's in Amos 3.7. Um, so he is 
warning. We hear this, you know, his prophets warning of these impending judgments. They're being sounded throughout the earth. And what we're seeing right now is the Lord lifts his hand off America and around the world in his great mercy. Um, he's giving this world a good shaking and we haven't seen anything yet, right, to awaken as many as are willing. And believe me, um, the things I've, sh- I- I- I've seen and others are-, are saying it, we haven't seen anything yet. And not one, he told me this before too, not one will escape this shaking, for it will reveal and remove what is shakable so that which cannot be shaken may remain. Of course, that's in Hebrews 12, verse 26 and 27. But as I prayed throughout that night, the Lord kept showing me, and this is what was causing a lot of the groaning, is that many who say they are his will not remain when the ground begins to shake beneath them. Uh, Most haven't responded to his call to to come to the garden, okay, to come to the, the secret place of the Most High. He showed me that to have intimacy with God requires we enter into the secret place to commune with him. This place is the inner chamber, a bridal chamber, which is represented in the physical temple as the Holy of Holies, you know, in the Old Testament. And you can see come to the garden and that goes into that more. But So this inner chamber, this bridal chamber, uh, was represented in the physical temple as the Holy of Holies. And as we know, Satan counterfeits the things of God. And the Lord has shown he also has a secret chamber. From the time... You and I were born, the devils worked to construct a secret place in your heart. And it's a well-hidden fortress with impenetrable walls, the devil's hiding place, and from which he seeks to commune with you from this place. And in there, in this place, dwell all your secrets, your trauma, pain, guilt, shame, etc. Even though we may not be conscious of it, like I, I wasn't, it acts as a barrier to the intimacy with God we so desperately desire, as well as blocking intimacy with other humans. Hence my, I said, I, I've always wanted to have somebody care enough about me and want to really get to know me and it would allow me to know them. It blocks that uh, as well. Um, So after this revelation, I cried out to God, asking what I was to do. And I received that I needed to spend a lot of time before him in prayer and um, asking to be shown this place. And And I... began that night, but especially that following day, and, and I'm always asking now. Um, I was shown that we're to be asking the Lord to show us this place and to allow the Holy Spirit shine light into it, that the hidden things found there be brought out and laid bare before him. And... Uh, just so you'll know how this, this hiding place of the devil affects us, uh, real quickly, I want to just give you a personal example so you can see you know, how something like trauma or this or that or the other can be used. Uh, about seven or eight years ago, an individual came um, to my house to purchase a vehicle you know, that I had listed for sale. and He turned out to be a brother. Of, of a neighborhood friend of mine that uh, I had back when I was 12 years old. And we were all, all real happy to see, oh, hey, how are you? And we updated each other you know, about our families, et cetera, and all was well, and he left. And then I, you know, just thinking back, you know, I was just, 
you know, it was kind of uh, interesting. I was thinking back, uh, started remembering what was going on in my life while living in that neighborhood. Uh, but suffice it to say, something horrible happened to me that year. And it had nothing to do with him. He was just in my friend group, you know, but it was, it was horrible. But by the next morning, after uh, seeing this, this person from the past, it was like a dark cloud had engulfed me. And, and I felt mentally and emotionally paralyzed for a couple of days. Um, wasn't functioning well at all. It's like I was depressed. I, I kind of depressed and I kept thinking, what in the world? But, you know, it caused me to remember these things. And this is how the devil can paralyze us and take us out of the game at will, you know, at, at least temporarily. And he has a fortress in our heart filled with things like this. You know, he can, he can push this or, or that button or, you know, have someone say something or, 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 or do something or just bring up a memory, you know, uh, to trigger like a, a fresh wave of, of fear or guilt or shame, whatever, come over you. But <clears throat> the Lord, while I was praying about, Lord, show me what I need to see about this, he just brought that memory up, you know. He brought that, what happened to me. Excuse me, let me take another drink. He showed me, he reminded me what happened to me seven or eight years ago and how this all relates. So, but I took that particular memory before him and asked him to shine light on it and show me what I needed to know. And it turns out I had swept this under the carpet and never, uh, just how far I'd swept it under. When the time, this happened when I was 12. And it totally changed directions in my life. But do you know, I never told a living soul about it. It never came out of my mouth, not even a best friend, nothing, until I was 30-something years old and I turned, uh, when I first mentioned it to somebody. But turns out I swept this under the carpet and never asked God to heal me of things that had happened during this time period. And there was... I found out unforgiveness in my heart. Um, there was like shame over what had happened, that I'd kept lots of things bottled up, you know, et cetera. But I hope that helps. But only God can tear down and destroy the fortress of the enemy within our heart. Okay? Our part is to willingly bring everything before him, you know, um, we must hammer our prayers into fine powder, you know. Don't leave anything out. Don't try to hide or dress up or, or, or disguise your pain or agony or, or, or if it's sin, you know. Don't be vague, you know, when repenting. You know, I've, I've, looking back, I see, I do that a lot. I've caught myself, you know, being, oh, God, forgive me for all my sins. Just, in a nutshell, I don't really specify what they are, you know, um, like, forgive me for my sinful thoughts and actions this afternoon or whatever. He wants us to talk it over with him. What were they? Call it what it is and discuss everything with your father. Ask him to show you what you need to see. You know, ask him to um, show you what you need to pray. Lord God, um, show me what I need to see about this. Lord, how do I pray about this? I was shown uh, to plead the blood of Jesus over some of these things. And I ask the grace of God be extended. Uh, ask him for that uh, and applied to you to, to be set free of the chains of bondage in your life because that kind of stuff's a bondage, you know. Saints, the, the Lord's impressed the urgency of this message to his people, you know, because as each enters into communion with him, we're then connected. Uh, becoming one in the spirit with him and each other. And this is how the body of Christ will do even greater works than Jesus and be used as instruments of his righteousness, you know, to be sent forth to enter the, those mighty fortresses of, of the enemy and set captives free. Little did I know those fortresses are, are built up in everyone's heart, you know. Um, but with that said... I believe it helpful to to be reminded of why the sense of urgency and and how God wants to use 
uh, his people in the days just ahead of us. So um, I want to share a vision I was given uh, in, oh, it was the end of May of this year, and it's called on the blog, Signs and Wonders Will Follow. Um, during that morning, I began feeling an intense sorrow and heaviness come over me. And I asked the Lord what was happening. Where was this coming from? And after some pr- time in prayer, it was impressed upon me, I was being shown the heart of God. But the reason for the sorrow wasn't given until later that evening. And I prayed quietly in the Spirit for the remainder of the day, but um, by evening, it had progressed to a deep groaning. And soon after, you know, I, I knelt down by the side of my bed, and I started seeing images, you know, flood through my mind. And, and it was it was a crescendo of events. They came rushing in. And from what seemed like, like a bird's eye view, I saw floods coming in. I saw... I saw fire spreading out. I saw areas um, that were barren and drought conditions. I saw various conflicts and wars breaking out. You know, it was a complete state of chaos all over the earth. Um, Then everything zoomed in close, and I could sense the heart of the people. And there was vast confusion and fear. Uh, suffering, you know, permeated the atmosphere. And, and I saw evil mushrooming to the point where anything good, okay, anything lovely and of God became a hated target. And what came next explained the anguish I've been feeling all day. I saw targeted dis- uh, actual destruction of what God had created to bless us, to bless mankind, uh, like marriage, Children, which, which children are our heritage, and, and the church itself. And from the persecution and martyrdom of his people to, to butchering our seed, you know, our heritage in the womb. But blood was being spilled all over the earth. And at that moment, I cried out, oh God, please help us. Come soon, Lord Jesus. And I then heard the Holy Spirit say, the whole earth is groaning in travail, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And I felt very remorseful and began to repent, not only for me, but for the entire church. And then I turned out the lights and I went to lay down and I was still groaning in my spirit over all the pain and suffering. And I, I started to fall asleep while praying. And suddenly in the spirit, I saw myself rise from the bed and begin walking. And I was walking toward a group of people huddled together in the back corner of a room. And it was their cries I'd heard that actually drew me in their direction. And the room was dimly lit, but there were uh, what appeared to be about six or more crouched down on the floor. And they were just trembling in fear. Uh, They were desperately trying to hold on to each other. And as I walked toward the group, I knew I was being watched. uh, Although my focus, it remained straight ahead on the group, I was aware in the spirit of many eyes watching to see what would be done. And it was also impressed upon me, if I continued walking in that direction, there would be consequences. But I continued walking. And the love of God was flowing through me so strongly at that point, nothing could stop me. And as I reached the group, I extended my hand toward them, and instantly I knew whatever their individual needs were, God met them. Then I heard the Lord say, when my people are moved with compassion, signs and wonders will follow. Now, that was the end of that vision, but I'm going to say it again. It's just huge. When my people are moved with compassion, signs and wonders will follow. And the Lord shown several things, saints. The, the blood of the innocent is crying out from the ground to him, and this is moving the heart of God. And the word shows from Genesis to Revelation that God will not hold his peace when this happens. Um, the groaning is growing louder and louder. 
You know, the saints pressing into God, becoming intimate with him, are now beginning to feel his very heart and cry out in our prayers and our growing, our intercession. And saints, there's coming a time when we'll begin to see horrors beyond our comprehension. And at this time, we as the body of Christ will be motivated, motivate, excuse me, moved and motivated by, you know, that same compassion that moved Jesus. When Jesus was moved with compassion, you can see it all the way through the New Testament. I, I don't have time to quote the individual scriptures, but it says, when Jesus was moved with compassion, miracles always followed. As with Jesus, when the disciples spoke and did as led by the Holy Spirit, the Lord confirmed their word with signs and wonders. Even entire towns were converted, Acts 9, 33 and 35. The Lord has prepared a people, a group he calls his hidden ones. And as the righteous judge moves throughout the land, these being moved with compassion will go forth. And the love of God will flow through them so powerfully, nothing will be able to stop them. They'll fear not as they open their mouth and proclaim this truth. For as they extend their hands toward the people, he will confirm their word with signs and wonders. That's what's ahead of us, saints. And I would like to quickly share one last message before I summarize, because all this is tied together. Two weeks ago, it was on September 23rd, God woke me up at 3.30 in the morning saying, get up. And... I'd had a couple sleepless nights in a row, so when I heard get up, I rolled over and I started to go back to sleep. And um, as soon as I began losing consciousness, the Lord said, get up, this will go much quicker than you think. That got my attention. So, so I got up, I rose up quickly to a setting position right on the edge of my bed and I asked, What's, what's going to go much quicker than I think? But he only said it again. And a great, I can tell you, it's like a download in the spirit, a great sense of urgency came upon me so that I rose up, I began scurrying around to prepare for the day, you know, for whatever it was that was going to go much quicker than I thought. And <clears throat> at first, I thought it had to do with the birth of my granddaughter, because I just prayed the night before that her birth would be perfectly timed. And, and I, I truly was expecting a call to head to the hospital at any moment. So, you know, I thought, it, oh, I better hurry up. I might get the call any minute. But <clears throat> before I jumped into action, you know, I checked to make sure it was okay to sit down, um, begin the day with prayer and study, you know, as, as, as I do. And I received yes. And so I began. And... It was soon made crystal clear that it was not just a personal word to me, but to the entire body of Christ, okay? And, and I'm going to say it again. Um, this will go. Get up. This will go much quicker than you think. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm really having trouble here with my voice. An email received the night before was brought to my attention as I was sitting there praying and setting. And um, I read it, and it was from a sister in the Lord going through a tough time, um, began bringing, it, it started bringing everything into focus. And she asked if I'd felt a shift in the spirit. She said, Diane, have you felt a shift in the spirit? Like, like, like maybe, I feel like everything slowed down or, or be, everything's become more quiet than normal. So she said that. And the Lord reminded me also of recent conversations and prayers with with people going through horrible trials and how they're barely holding on, as I said before. And just like, you know, many of you listening are are down in that valley right now crying out to the Lord. And, And, I mean, when we get like that, sometimes we're not even able to pray. All we can do is groan before him. But And I've been there a lot this past year as well. But... 
God showed me he's not only speaking of the world events, um, which do sometimes seem to get quiet or, or be on hold, but he's speaking to our individual circumstances here. So we're told the Lord uh, we seek will suddenly come to his temple in Malachi 3, 1. And this word is not only a warning to stay awake and ready, but it's to encourage us, you know, in the midst of our trials and afflictions. And that um, God will bring justice for his elect who cry to him day and night and will not delay in Luke 18, 17. And God wants us to remember he is a God of suddenly. So the Lord told me the Holy Spirit would minister this, you know, to each of us to speak directly to our individual situations. Like I said, I, I've been filled with a great sense of urgency since that really big, bigger than ever to be ready for whatever may come. But I'm also, uh, I'm also encouraged with an, uh, by an unexpected end to some deep, long-term personal trials so I hope that encourages you with some of the things you're going through because God's saying to us, get up. This will go much quicker than you think. Um, now, I, I know a lot's been covered, so I'd like to give just a real short summation of what I feel God is saying. First of all, the reason we feel such intense pressure mounting all around us and in our personal lives is because it is mounting. It is encircling us. The Lord's saying to his people, heads up, as I have warned you, all hell is coming against you. It is even now at the door. God's saying a great shaking is coming and that not one, not one of us will escape the shaking. He's saying when the ground begins to shake beneath our feet, many of those who say, they're his, will not remain. We're told it's time to press in as never before um, because the prince of this world is coming. This time for the set-apart ones, those in preparation, you know, the, the, the bride, to be the bride of Christ. The bride's struggle will not be against the lower-ranked devils, but against the princes and rulers of the darkness. Uh, listed like in Ephesians 6.12. This has already begun because we've been told the enemy has surrounded the camps of my people. The arrows are being fired upon us now. You know, we're told that slander, we're warned in advance, slander has always been a favorite weapon of the devil. So don't be surprised when it hits your house and comes from someone in your close circle. He always attempts to get someone closest to you. And if the people around you, whether it be family, friends, associates, if the people around you are not completely sold out to God, they can be used by the enemy. Be aware of that, so don't be surprised. Um, it'll come in as a consuming fire. But God says, let the fire consume you. Just, just remember that. Just... Uh, we've been reminded of the main tools the saints of God have always used when surrounded by the enemy. That of praise, like the, I, I began praising him in song. Um, the, the tool of prayer and fasting. Um, there's nothing, there's nothing more powerful than these tools. And a key question has been asked, tonight can you say he has nothing in me just as our bridegroom so must the bride be able to say that about the devil he has nothing in me the lord's calling is people to come to the garden that secret place of intimacy and we have a short window of time brethren to take shelter in the most high god's revealed the hiding place of the devil this dark, hidden place is, is, is used to keep us from our deepest desire. The Lord wants us to understand our deepest desire for intimacy with him is also his desire 
to fully know him and to be known by him, we must become one with him. And oneness is obtained through open communication with nothing standing between. And um, it's only when we can appear naked and unashamed before our God that we're finally able to say, as Jesus did, he has nothing in me. And once the hiding place of the devil is destroyed, our prayers will no longer be hindered. We'll be able to soar, you know, on the wings of the eagle as high as the spirit desires to take us. Um, And I pray, I pray we allow God entrance to our hearts, that, that we allow him to shine his light into that secret, hidden place that the devil has set up and that we allow him to obliterate and take those walls down. And we can then say, he has nothing in me. Uh, It will be then that we'll be ready to be used by God in the days ahead. And he assures us at that time, nothing will be able to stop us until his purposes are fulfilled. And so, John, I think that's a good stopping point. Um, So, you know, I'll turn the mic back to you if that's okay. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I knew it would be something that would just be anointed and and really be something that folks needed to be able to hear, to be able to relate to the challenges that a lot of us have been going through and the discouragement that comes along with it. And and that at the same time, also the opportunity that comes along with that to be able to make some adjustments to the way we look at things and the opportunity that the Lord has laid before us to grow closer to him so that we're not, you know, so we don't find ourselves in a bad place as the days grow darker, which I think most of us are pretty sure is right around the corner. But anyway, God bless you, and thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. What a powerful message. God bless you. Mm. God bless you too, John. Thank you for having me.